While it wasn't exactly great in every way, the original Bioshock was a masterpiece because of the way it created a real sense of place. A lot of people talk about specific characters, your Andrew Ryans and your Frank Fontaines. But the true star of Bioshock is Rapture, the underwater city designed to be a utopia for the greatest thinkers of the 1950s. The events of that first game hit home that much harder because by the time you got to the end, Rapture felt real. Without that, the twists and turns of that story would ring hollow, and Andrew Ryan's vision would have come off all hokey and pointless. Bioshock 2 is not Bioshock 1. The thrill of discovery and the excitement of finding out what makes Rapture tick is gone because you already know all that stuff. That doesn't make Bioshock 2 a bad game. In fact, considering what it had to live up to, it's really impressive that it comes out as well as it does. But the events of Bioshock 2 feel more like a footnote when compared to the original game, making it best suited for Bioshock superfans who are looking for just a little bit more backstory. My name is Andrew Ryan. The action in Bioshock 2 is set roughly 10 years after the events of the first game, and you play as a character that's usually referred to as Subject Delta. You're an advanced prototype Big Daddy. So you'll spend the time stomping around in a big suit, and you're armed with a large drill that serves as your melee weapon. For reasons that aren't immediately explained, you wake up with free will. So instead of just droning and stomping alongside little sisters as they harvest Adam from dead bodies, you can sort of run around and do as you please. The crux of the story is that you're trying to get back to the sister that you've been bound to because your body slowly shuts down when you've been apart for too long. But since that girl is the daughter of Sophia Lamb, the Andrew Ryan replacement that's restarted the Little Sister Project to satisfy her own warped philosophical slant, you're going to have to fight your way through Rapture first. In fact, you'll be fighting your way through the oldest parts of Rapture, parts that are serviced by a now-defunct train line. This sets the structure of Bioshock 2, which is decidedly more linear than the previous game. To put it bluntly, the train only goes one way. So when you satisfy the requirements of a level, which usually involves clearing a path for the train to continue, you'll hop back aboard and ride it to the next level. There is no return trip to levels you've already visited, so taking care of every little sister you see is something you'll have to deal with up front. Since you're effectively a big daddy, the yellow-eyed little sisters trust you implicitly. So the process of dealing with the sisters and the potential for reward has changed a bit compared to the first game. First, you'll have to take out the big daddy currently protecting a little sister as she runs around with her comically oversized syringe gun thing, sucking Adam out of corpses. Once you've done that, you can elect to adopt the sister as your own and take her around to gather Adam from other corpses. Gathering means finding a viable corpse, then setting the sister down while she takes care of business. Once she begins, splicers and other enemies begin to attack from all sides, and you'll have to protect the sister from attack during the process. Setting up mini turrets and laying other traps helps a lot in this process. When she harvests, you get the Adam. Of course, there's still a bit of moral choice to this process. You can elect to harvest the sister at any point, killing her and getting a chunk of Adam for yourself. Or you can take them to one of the vent holes that are all over Rapture and rescue her by turning her back into a regular little girl. Like the previous game, this ends up being a reward now versus reward later type of scenario, and the deferred rewards you get for saving them are substantial. Between using the girls to gather Adam whenever possible and the Adam you get for saving them, by the end of the game there was nothing else I felt like I needed to buy. As before, the way you handle the little sister situation and a few other kill or don't kill moments dictate the way the story concludes, and it's a bit more substantial than just seeing a different ending cinematic. The story has its twists and turns, but I never really felt like any of it even approached the impact of the original. Sophia Lamb, the game's antagonist, feels crammed into the Rapture storyline. You'll find audio logs that have her debating philosophy with Andrew Ryan and others that attempt to paint her as a key figure during the events that led up to the first Bioshock, but it all feels a little forced since she didn't come up at all during the first game. Also, and bear with me as it's kind of a minor point, after 10 years of crazy splicers being crazy in the city under the sea, wouldn't all those old Andrew Ryan audio logs have been smashed to bits by psychos by now instead of conveniently laying around for you to find? Why are there still tons of beer and wine bottles everywhere? When they've been smashed or drank by the feral citizens of Rapture after 10 more years had passed? The original Bioshock wasn't perfect in the way it handled its story and its world, but the holes here feel bigger and the events don't feel as eventful. It's more side story than sequel, and it's at its best when it's directly referencing things from the first game, even if it doesn't always treat the original source material with care. So it's bittersweet, then, that Bioshock 2 plays a lot better than its predecessor. You can now dual wield by carrying a weapon in your right hand and using your left for plasmid attacks. Plasmids like Incinerate and Electro Bolt return, and even the old plasmids learn new tricks. 
Each can be purchased in three different forms, and by holding down the fire button, you can charge them up for different effects. Winter Blast, the Ice Plasmid, ended up being my go-to power, as freezing enemies in a solid block of ice makes the rest of the work easy. The firearms in Bioshock 2 feel better than they did in the previous game, where I felt like playing through with the wrench was usually the best tactic. You'll start with a basic rivet gun, but between the three upgrades you can earn for each weapon and the variety of other firearms at your disposal, the combined forces of plasmids and guns ends up making you a substantial threat while also offering enough variety to let you experiment with the different weapons and abilities you'll earn. You'll use those weapons against the typical run of crazy splicers, including the new Brute Splicer, which is the big, tough, and crazy enemy. You also encounter big sisters. These are grown-up little sisters wearing big daddy-like gear, and one will find and confront you after you deal with every little sister in a level. The big sister is the toughest enemy you'll face in the entire game, but that doesn't mean she's especially tough. It's also the closest thing Bioshock 2 has to a boss fight. Ask a Bioshock fan what they want to see in a second Bioshock game, and I'd guess that multiplayer would be pretty low on the list. Considering the atmosphere of the first game, the way it wove its story through audio logs and the state of the city itself, Team Deathmatch sounds like the sort of thing to be built from the weakest parts of the original game. But between the improved mechanics that appear in the single player and some interesting ideas, Bioshock 2's multiplayer is surprisingly fun. Unlike the single player game, the Bioshock 2 multiplayer is set prior to the events of the first game, when Atlas and Ryan were going head to head in the war that would eventually turn Rapture into an underwater wasteland. To Rapture, 1959. May it be our finest year. <laughs> As a result, many of the maps you'll play on are modified versions of locations from the first game, like Fort Frolic and the Farmer's Market. Using the weapons and plasmids on live players ends up being a lot more interesting than the AI of the single player, and the game takes on a modern warfare-like feel in the way that you gain experience and unlock additional tonics and weapons as you go. Researching enemies for a damage bonus even found its way into the multiplayer, which is a neat touch. At times, it almost seems unfair to compare Bioshock 2 to its predecessor. The first game was a unique experience that rose above its gameplay shortcomings by creating a world that was intensely thrilling to explore. Returning to it is naturally going to be less exciting, since so much of its history is already known to you going in. But by improving on the gameplay, and giving you just enough new and interesting factoids to make Rapture feel like Rapture, Bioshock 2 is a successful package.